Louis Sullivan was an architect who coined the phrase form follows function, which you've probably heard before. Sullivan was also known as the father of the skyscraper, and he was using that phrase, which was originally form ever follows function, in reference to designing buildings. So it started out as just an architecture principle, where what a building looks like should be based on what the building does. So for example, a skyscraper's basic function is that it should hold a lot of people without taking up very much land. So its form ends up being a huge tower reaching straight up. The function comes first, and then the aesthetics and shape of the building match its intended purpose. So then, how does Fez follow form follow function? Well, the first way is by emulating old-school adventure games. Fez is certainly not a point-and-click adventure game in the same way that something like King's Quest is, but it does have a similar feel to the puzzles. A lot of older, puzzle-heavy games like The Legend of Zelda, or even something like Zork, basically needed a pencil and paper to solve puzzles or get through certain areas. These puzzles required considering a lot of information at once, sometimes too much to keep in your mind, which is why people would write things down. And Fez does the same thing. The puzzles in Fez are very reminiscent of these older games, of a puzzle type that's all but non-existent now. So that's the function of the puzzles in Fez. They require a lot of information gathering and are similar to puzzles from older adventure games. As a result, it takes the form of the graphical style of those games, sometimes even directly referencing them. The art style, character designs, and sound effects, which maybe aren't part of the visual form, but they're part of the aesthetic, are very similar to those of games from the era it's drawing from. So your goal for a lot of the game is to assemble these cubes made up of smaller pieces. You have to find enough cube fragments scattered around in order to continue. So at its basic level, the function is that you need 8 collectibles to progress in the game. It doesn't even have to be cubes functionally. So the form is that you collect cube fragments that very clearly take up 1 8th of the full cube. When you have 4 of the cube fragments, it's very obvious that you need exactly 4 more. This eliminates the need for a numbered counter or anything like that. And for one more example, the main mechanic of Fez is that you can shift the camera 90 degrees at a time. And when you do that, it actually changes the world. Wherever the platforms are lined up in two-dimensional space after you shift perspectives is where they really are. It's a little hard to explain, but hopefully you get the idea from seeing it if you haven't played it before. A side effect of this perspective shifting is that you often don't end up where you thought you would after changing perspectives, and changing back can actually move you somewhere else. So going back to form follows function, the function of this mechanic is that you can shift your perspective and the platforms sort of change position when you do that. The form that was created to complement that, at least in the early areas, is that the ground is made of individual blocks, rather than one solid piece of ground. This makes it very clear which block you're standing on, so it isn't arbitrary or make you fall off when you think you shouldn't have. It also gives players an idea of where exactly they end up after shifting the camera each time. It can be a little hard to grasp, so that makes it easier to understand where they're moving each time the world rotates. It's important that people don't think mechanics are arbitrary or random, especially one that they'll be using the whole game. You can sell people on pretty crazy worlds, but as soon as the world feels like it's not internally consistent, it breaks that immersion. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, and thank you for watching this episode of Breakdown.